Sports and Sport now and a chance that every footy fan would die for. How about running your own club? £35 is all you'll need to join that exclusive club of multi-millionaires who own their own football club. And the director's box might be a little bit crowded. <laughs> There'll be 50,000 other fans sharing the job with you, picking the team. Jim Rice is here to explain. Forget yachts on the Riviera and penthouse apartments. The only status symbol for any self-respecting billionaire these days is to own your own football club. For most of us, of course, calling the shots from the boardroom is something we can only dream about. But just as football seems to be moving further away from the average fan, one man's trying to bring it all back. Meet journalist and Fulham fan Tim Glynn-Jones. His football skills are never likely to set the world alight, but his ideas just might. Because Tim wants to give us all the chance to be a football club owner. Here's how it works. You register online, it costs £35, and you get a vote on which club you'd like to try to buy. Once 50,000 people have registered, the money's collected in, and nearly £2 million goes into a pot to buy a club. And that's where the real fun starts. One club, 50,000 plus owners. And each week they all get to vote online on who should play in the team and what formation they should play. Kind of fantasy football, but for real. It's really a test to see whether fans do actually know as much about the game as we think they do. Uh, they're not usually given credit for knowing as much about the game as the people who are paid to run it. Um, we've got a hunch that they do know an awful lot about the game and this is their chance to prove it. So, what's all this got to do with us? Well, third in the voting, behind the unlikely duo of Leeds and Nottingham Forest, sit Cambridge United. Their current chairman is former Norwich striker, now businessman, Lee Power. And he's not completely against the idea. The ball beans would be interesting, to say the least, to be honest. Um, but I think it's, it's one of those things, we have to be very careful that we don't become guinea pigs. And I think the long-term funding of the football club would be fundamental. But it's an interesting concept and, um, you know, if they wanted to come and speak to us, we'd be more than happy to listen. But what do people in Cambridge think? Somebody's got to own it. Um, fans owning it, yeah, good idea. That's the way to do it. I'd say go for it. Perhaps they'd be more interested in attending, wouldn't they? And going to the match. Gareth Payne's been into fantasy football since he was a kid. He was one of the first to sign up. The stakeholders will be responsible as they're the ones that make the decisions. So um, for the coach or the manager, um, it's kind of a no-lose situation. Some of Gareth's and everyone else's £35 will go into the club's coffers. Handy cash to spend on the stadium and new players. But there are other benefits too. The club that does get bought will suddenly find a massive influx of, of supporters and huge interest, uh, probably more than they've ever known. So um, that is going to be a good thing for the club. So if you fancy owning a football club, being on the coaching staff and be a fan all at once, now could be your chance. Just, Just don't, don't expect, expect to have, have it all your, your own way. way. Jim, Jim Rice, Rice Anglia News, News, Cambridge. Cambridge. What an amazing scheme. It's a brilliant idea, oh, isn't it? Yeah, we're following that. Definitely, yeah. if, they, if they buy Cambridge United, it'd be fantastic. I think Cambridge is worth 35 quid. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, should we, a bit should more. Should we go for it? Should we have a go oh. and vote for Cambridge? <laughs> we'll move on in boxing. Bedford.